I know, I know, riding in sneakers is a bad idea. And believe it or not, you guys have completely got me believing that. But I'm sure at some point in time, we've all ridden in sneakers. And despite the fact that they wouldn't be very useful in a high speed crash, I find them to be most dangerous at a standstill. I'm sure you've experienced that insane adrenaline rush from your shoelace getting hooked around the foot peg right as you're ready to put that foot down to support the weight of the bike. The sudden thought of the bike crashing down isn't fun. So here's a bike saving hack if you ride with shoelaces. Simply lift one of the rows of laces crossing over and tuck all the loose ends under it. Not only are the suicidal bits not going anywhere, but you're now a part of the next big motorcycle fashion trend. Have you ever found yourself just a few miles from home with a small purchase like let's say, pff, I don't know, a Red Bull and no backpack to get it home? Sure, R1's boots are massive, but what if it's already full with your secret stash? My favorite trick is to tuck your shirt into your pants and then drop the item down your shirt. It might be an amusing few miles riding home, but it's always liberating riding without a backpack. If you're fully committed to a good looking rear end, or you just have a track bike, you've probably removed your passenger foot pegs. However, that can make finding a point to attach a tie down to the back of the bike a painful task. Well, painful if you don't want to scratch it, that is. An easy and cost effective way is to pick up two eye bolts and a threaded rod from your local hardware store. Cut the rod down to the length of your rear axle and feed it through the axle with an eye bolt thread onto either side. Now a tie down can easily be attached and the exact same thing can be done for the swing arm pivot if you prefer. You'll just need to alter the length of the rod. In the last hacks video we tackled lazy GoPro mounts that get scared at windy speeds. I proposed carrying a multi-tool to use the secret Phillips screw head in the thumb screw. However, a few of you guys suggested this. Grab a little piece of rough sandpaper and scuff the inside of the GoPro mount where the camera would be attached. This way it should bite into the mount to stop the camera falling over in a drunken haze without the need for superhuman strength or excess tools. Did you know that the bug juice and dirt you're cleaning off of your bike might actually be scratching it? I'm sorry, but you had to hear it. However, I'm here with a solution. It's called the two bucket method. Next time, use one bucket for rinsing your cloth so that all the paint scratching contaminants coming off of the bike can be left in that bucket. And a second bucket purely for fresh soapy goodness with only your bike's best interests in mind. Have you ever wondered how professional motovloggers get such good audio while riding a motorcycle? Do they do it as a voiceover afterwards? Have they tried every helmet in search of the ultimate windless one? Is it actually a green screen and they've been lying to you your whole life? The good news is that it's much simpler than that. Kill a cat and skin it. Or if you're vegan, just buy some fur. Cut it into a tiny square big enough to cover a lapel microphone and sew it up so that the microphone is trapped inside a cozy ball of fur, never to be affected by the wind again. It's a mixture of magic and science that nobody really understands, but now you can talk to your heart content and always be heard. If you have a quirky clutch on a second hand bike, it could be due to it sitting around for months on end without getting ridden which is needed for regular lubrication. Today, we'll fix that by removing the clutch plates from the basket and soaking the friction plates in oil overnight. In the order you removed them, with the bike on the side stand, you shouldn't even need to drain the oil. 
because the oil level will be below the clutch cover. Friction plates require soaking in oil before installation to saturate the friction lining. So they could dry up if the bike sits for a long time and this just might reinvigorate your clutch's will to do clutchy things. The devil is in the detail. Everyone wants a super clean looking bike, but few have the elbow grease required. Here's a good start to give you the cleaning bug. Grab a cleaning scourer from the kitchen and along with a bucket of soapy water, scrub the brake disc bolts. You'll be amazed by the color they are afterwards. It turns out that a life so close to brake dust is a tough one. And the same can be done for the edge of the disc itself. Who knew it could be shiny with the right abrasive tools? I can't be the only one who doesn't enjoy cleaning the outside of a helmet. There are so many rules. Don't use that. Don't do that. That will damage the structure of the helmet. That will scratch the visor. So why not use the same stuff your beloved bike gets? Automotive polish. If it's good enough for my bike's delicate paintwork, it's good enough for my head, right? Well, if you have a gloss finish helmet that is. It works brilliantly at softening bugs when letting the polish sit for a few minutes, making them easy to wipe off and leaves a beautifully shiny protective layer, making the next cleaning spree easier. Sometimes it seems like it might be easier to buy a new bike rather than putting new handlebar grips on yours. There are some good tricks to putting them on within one day, but the best one for someone with more hair products than workshop tools is to spray just enough slippery hairspray over the bar and a little in the grip to get it on with limited fuss. This way you can get it in the right orientation before the alcohol in the hairspray dries up and you're left with a well stuck grippy grip that smells handsome. So which is your favorite hack? If you want to see more videos like this, subscribe and share it with a friend. Better yet, hit the like button and give me some of your hack suggestions down in the comments. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you on the next ride.